Hello and welcome to my unboxing and review of the Back to the Future 1-6 scale Doc Brown figure from Hot Toys. This is the deluxe version. I have been a big Back to the Future fan for a long time. And when this figure was first released, I knew I wanted to get it. However, I wanted to wait until I got it on a bit of a discount. And my waiting paid off. Lo and behold, I found a good deal for it, so I ended up picking it up. As far as I know, this is the first Back to the Future figure to use an actual screenshot from the movie as the art. It's of course the scene when the DeLorean time machine is first revealed. I do like this image quite a bit, but the issue I have is that it's not Doc Brown. You actually can't tell that Doc Brown is the actual figure that's in this box, except for the fact that the description of him is in the bottom corner. On the plus side, you could use this screenshot from the movie as the backdrop for the figure if you wanted to. As you can see here, the screenshot does wrap around to the sides of the art box. You have the Back to the Future logo with the Out of Time Tour 85 text with the DeLorean in hover mode. And on the other side, the screenshot still wraps around with the same logo on the other side. The Back to the Future logo is on the top of the box, and on the back you have all the credits with this retro Back to the Future logo at the top. Once you remove the lid, there is an inlay sheet of the DeLorean time machine. Still no image of Doc Brown, surprisingly, with a um, display of the time circuits up above. Here's the Doc Brown figure in his white radiation suit, and you can see all the accessories that he comes with. The tool belt and tools that go inside come in their own tray. Here's the instruction sheet, which basically tells you not to excessively bend any of the limbs on the figure. The outfit is not detachable. Don't keep the figure in direct sunlight for extended periods of time. Basically, it tells you where all the accessories go. Starting off with the top tray, you can see on the inside his tool belt and his large pouch with all these pockets that the tools will go in. There's plutonium rod and plutonium container. He's got square, he's got a file, several screwdrivers, he's got some pliers, a bunch of really cool tools. Going through the rest of his accessories, he comes with this silver pouch. It's got some nice stitching on there. This will go on the belt too. And his small printer. See the detail on there. It's gonna go inside the pouch like this. He also comes with these two watches. This silver one on the left, all these buttons on it and this one on the right that has the finger attachment to it. He's got this small board with three pins. And here are the two stopwatches the figure comes with, one for Doc Brown and one for Einstein. You can see they actually put in really small lettering on the stopwatch. Up next is his silver clipboard. And the clip actually doesn't work, that's a little disappointing. Here's some documentation that comes with the clipboard and the small map. He also has a notepad with actual lined pages on the inside. A little bit of trivia, that's actually a blurred image of a gremlin. Spielberg was a producer on both Gremlins and Back to the Future. Here's my favorite accessory with this set. It's the remote control for the DeLorean. As you can see, they've got some really nice detailing on the controls there, including the stop over on the left, you can read that. And you've got all these really cool wires bundled up in the back and labeling. They did a really nice job with this, I like it. This is the deluxe version, which comes with this plutonium case, which I'm kind of mixed about. On the plus side, I do like the molded locks on the front and the handles that they have on the sides, plus the one on the top. And I even like the molded corner pieces that they have on the case. But everything else about it feels just a little cheap. It does feel like it's made out of a 
sort of a flimsy paper material. And let's open it up here. You can see all the um, plutonium cores on the inside. I think instead of using sort of a printed sticker for everything else on the case, had they gone with um, a molded piece for the silver part of the frame, that would have made it look considerably better. But instead, it's just sort of printed on there. It looks a little cheap, and especially in the back, that looks really bad. I wish they had gone for molded pieces for the hinges there. I like this accessory. I'm just disappointed that they didn't put a little bit more effort into it. I'm also worried about this seam along the back, which appears to be held together by just a thin sticker and repeated opening and closing is just going to make this seem even worse. Can you see how thin that paper material is in the back there? The problem too is that when you open the lid to the plutonium case, it wants to close. It doesn't stay open. See that? So to keep the lid of the plutonium case open, they give you these two sort of transparent tabs. You have to sort of bend them and place them inside. I don't know, it just doesn't look really good when they're used to prop the lid open. So here is Doc Brown right out of the case. It's definitely a likeness of Christopher Lloyd. I can definitely see it, but it is a reused head sculpt from a previous Doc Brown release, the Back to the Future Part 2 figure. That figure came with his metallic visor and as you can see, they've kept the slits in on the side of the head from the previous release. They didn't fill them in, which is very disappointing. Even though I do like this sculpt for Doc Brown, it's not really appropriate for this type of release. Had Hot Toys gone in and just filled in these gaps along the side of the head, made the hair a bit whiter, and given him somewhat of an older complexion, I think that would have gone a long way to making this a more satisfactory release. However, for a Christopher Lloyd head sculpt, I think this is really good. So let's take a look at the rest of his suit. So underneath, he's got sort of his tropical green button-down shirt and then sort of a tan cream-colored undershirt. He's got his breast pocket right here and looks like those are actually sort of like safety pins take these off. He's got pockets just below the hip here with the orange trim. And he's got his brown shoes with treads on the bottom. Those look really nice. He even has sort of a black lining on underneath his plutonium suit. Here's the back of the suit with the plutonium logo. He comes with a pair of relaxed hands and one additional pair of hands. This is the only additional pair of hands that he comes with. The included display base is pretty basic. It's the black oval type with the movie logo and the nameplate. And then they also include the crotch grabber. Nothing special. It's the same one that they gave us for the Marty McFly and Einstein set. Let's put this in here. And an additional pair of wrist pegs. Here's the Einstein from the Marty set. The instructions say to detach the head to put the stopwatch on. There we go. I went ahead and assembled all of Doc Brown's equipment and accessories, and I think he looks really great. As far as articulation goes, he bends pretty well at the knees. He's got good foot rotation. He bends well at the elbows. He's limited a little bit in the abdominal crunch. And the head also has good movement. As far as the legs coming out, they don't really extend out very far, which is a little concerning, especially if you decide you want to try and fit him in the DeLorean. Let's see how easy it is to fit the clipboard into his hand here. It's actually a little tricky to try and fit the clipboard and the papers into his hand because there's nothing really to attach the papers to. They can't really attach to the clipboard, so his hand actually has to kind of hold up the clipboard and the papers at the same time. So 
You kind of have to fidget around with it just so that they sit properly and don't fall down. I like this Doc Brown release, and quite frankly, I'm glad I picked them up, but there were things that really could have been improved to make the release overall a whole lot better, namely the head sculpt and the paint applications, which really needed to be reworked to make him more closely match his appearance in the movie when he was at a much older age. And the plutonium case. I don't like these clear acrylic pieces which are used to hold the lid up. It really needed real working hinges. And also his clipboard really needed a real working clip to secure those documents in place. But I do really like the white radiation outfit that he's wearing and all the, also the other clothes that he has on underneath and the DeLorean remote control. That looks really great as well. Here's the Doc Brown figure posed holding his remote control standing alongside the Marty McFly figure. And I think these two look great together. It's a shot right out of the movie. I got the Hot Toys DeLorean out and I'm gonna see if I can fit Doc Brown in the time machine. I'm a little skeptical if I'm gonna be able to do that just because earlier when I tried to get the legs to bend at the hip, I didn't get very good rotation. Plus he's got layers of clothing on, plus his equipment belt. I might try and take that off to see if that will help me get him in there. Plus it wasn't easy. I ended up having to take all of his equipment off because it was just falling off and I didn't wanna risk any of it getting damaged. Plus I removed the shoes also to make it a lot easier to get him in there. Plus you kind of have to lean him back if you want to close the door. Fits in there, but um, not very well. So if you want to put him in your DeLorean, just make sure that you be careful. So I think that's pretty much going to do it for this review. I really appreciate you checking my video out. Be sure to give it a quick like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.